Hey Canada, well welcome. Uh, first I'd like to wish Canada a happy 143rd birthday. And what better place to celebrate that than in Peterborough, Ontario, home of the Canadian Canoe Museum. Now, what makes this place special? Well, if you don't know the impact the canoe has made in the foundation of Canada, you're probably not that Canadian. First off, we start off with uh, sort of the West Coast style of the dugout canoes. As you can see, they were made out of one solid piece of cedar. You have to forgive me if I seem to be going through this fast, but this museum is huge. Only one-third of the total kayak, or canoes and kayaks in here are of their collection. And there's still a lot of information. I've actually spent eight hours here and still can't get it all. And because I can't edit, I have to do this all in one fluid shot. So it's quite the challenge. Anyway, these are the typical birch bark canoes, the ones that sort of inspired the... Uh, the Europeans to build the bigger style ones that eventually were used uh, from the voyageurs and the great fur traders which founded our country. One of the great birch bark canoe makers of all time is William Commanda and his wife Mary. Mary had actually made a jacket for uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau which you'll see in video two because this is so huge I gotta do it in two videos. But look at the work on that. Isn't that amazing? All handmade. So these ones over here are some of the kayaks uh, for the deep sea. Uh, you can see the different stages they have shown here. And these are really rare. Um, they have show videos on how they, a lot of these were made. Interestingly, some of these were made so far north that they actually had to use driftwood. And they are actually made all together with seal skins sewn together and then sealed up. Can you believe that? Look at these. How cool is that? So here are some more birch bark canoes. Different examples of different regions had their different styles, width, bow. This is a uh, Micmac winter camp, style TP. And here is an actual functioning workshop where they'd actually built the canoe. And they show a video here of which you can buy at the, uh, the gift shop. And right now, a paddle is being made. This, this place is always really also interactive. It gets you an idea of some of the things you would have had to do to, uh, to uh, build a canoe, or there's instructional videos, or weaving, all kinds of neat things like that. Here's a typical voyageur canoe. As you can see, it's fully loaded. Look at how huge that is. So these boats would sit really low and they were really heavy and they'd have to paddle really hard. So that means they would go through about 5,000 calories a day. And most of that would be in pemmican. And pemmican, as described here, is take the scrappings from the driest outside corner of a very stale piece of cold roast beef, add it to lumps of rancid fat, and garnish it all with long human hairs, short hairs of a dog, and oxen. And you have a fair imitation of what pemmican was. That's disgusting. But that would be equivalent to five boxes of Kraft Dinner or 11 Big Macs a day. Now, of course, uh, Canada was founded on the fur trade. I'll repeat it as many times as we need to to get that perfectly clear which of course means it was founded on the canoe itself. What better place to spend Canada Day, honestly though? These are some of the items that they would wear or even trade. And again, it's interactive. It's called Try Your Hand, where you can learn to weave things. Actually, I spent uh, a long time here and I actually did all this stuff, making snowshoes, So coming up, it would have been what a traditional sort of camp would have been like uh, with the giant canoe flipped over and they would sort of sleep underneath it, except for the, uh, the lead trader. Uh, he would often have his own tent. He was often English and the, for the, other, the other guys were, were the French, the voyageurs. And rumor has it, 
that uh, he'd often sleep in and they'd need his tent poles because they'd go in the bottom of the boat as extra support. So they were constantly always waking up and their argument was they had to get going before the bugs and the heat hit. Notice how narrow the paddles are. The reason for this is because they had to stroke fast and they had to do uh, paddle hard all day long, hence the 5,000 calories, which usually worked out to 50 strokes a minute, 3,000, 30,000 strokes a day rather. And some of the hardships would be there were 150 portages between Montreal and Fort Chippewan in the far northwest. The cargo would be unloaded and, if possible, the canoe shot the rapids empty. Look at the size of those things. Can you imagine carrying that? Anyway, I hope you come and check out part two of this video. Uh, there's some pretty interesting stuff down there as well. Thanks for tuning in.